What is going on team? Welcome back to another news video. Today we're covering a few hot topics from uh, the past week. I'm going to try and make this a weekly news video for you guys that want just the news of what's going on in the space. Whilst if you've been seeing, Jack has been editing the daily videos that should be coming out a lot more regularly now. We're getting this down. Now before we get into the deep, meaty part of the vlog, the good stuff, you guys know that I like just adding little bits in, you know, that you may be able to use at a pub quiz or you just find interesting. Like this, the largest shoe size ever is US size 37 and it belonged to the world's tallest man ever. You know what they say, big feet, tall man. Imagine the toaster bar. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Long way to go, but with, I reckon 37's about the size of my arm. In some news this week, put on Lad Bible, scientists, yes, scientists, this was researched, concluded that drinking energy drinks may be the secret to living to 100 years old. That's me sorted then. I'm like the bug catcher off Pokemon, you gotta get them all. Look at this. Little office tour. Um. Load of Red Bulls, in case I need some wings. Uh, a load of Rains, just in case I need to make it rain. Uh, a few Primes, just in case I'm feeling in my prime. 100 years old, here I come. Although sometimes, team, you know when I'm like, I've seen my grandparents and I love them to bits. Like a hundred is my brain. Some of the 100 year old people are thriving and other 100 year old people fart and break their shoulder. I, I wanna thrive if I'm being a hundred. This week in a CrossFit gym. Oh, Gotta keep up with the stereotypes. Anyway, moving on. I don't really understand TikTok. I feel like, you know, maybe I'm getting old. But Jamie Hagia, past CrossFit Games athlete and now affiliate owner. Um, if you could have me for 24 hours and I couldn't say no, what would we do? People watch this. <laughs> uh, it's probably got loads of likes. I I don't understand. I feel like Michael Scott when I watch something like that. If you could have me for 24 hours and I couldn't say no, what would we do? <laughs> anyway, she found this viral TikTok trend sort of thing and she had her own answers for it. Made me laugh a little. If you could have me for 24 hours and I couldn't say no, what would we do? All right, so this is a bulldog. You're gonna go ahead and scrub the entire gym floor. And if there's a little bit of chalk on the ground, you might have to get on your hands and use to clean that up. Then we're gonna have you put plywood up on the wall. So you're gonna have to bolt it into the concrete. You're gonna prime and paint on top of that. And then you might as well just paint the whole entire gym. Clearly all our dumbbells are out of order because no one knows how to put them away correctly. So go ahead, take them off, clean them, and then reorganize them by weight, lowest to highest. This is called a mop. I've never used one before, but I think you just swirl it around on the ground. Anyway, next up, Jason Kalipa, 2008 CrossFit Games champion, business owner, father, took to Instagram this week and suggested a couple of ways that the CrossFit games and CrossFit itself could improve. I'm still making the push for two things. We should get rid of the teen division, the 14-15. I think that we should encourage them to go do a bunch of other stuff and, and we should talk about that more. I see where he's coming from with that one. As we've seen as of late, a lot of the teen athletes that have come through doing CrossFit are burning out earlier, both physically and mentally. Whereas that kind of didn't happen when CrossFit first came about because a lot of athletes came from other sports. But right now kids are kind of doing CrossFit from a very young age. What are your thoughts on this? Put it down below. And then his second point, I actually I actually like this idea. And the other is, I think we should have more events that are streamlined that repeat themselves on an annual basis so that we could have a sport that you could compare back to. Those are the two things I'm gonna keep bringing up and then hopefully one day they'll, they'll gain some more traction. Because I just think that every year, just all these new events, it's just, it's hard to keep track of as a spectator, you know, and, and, and it's also hard to relate to. Thoughts? Personally, I think it's a great idea. Like with the F1, like with the PGA Tour, having a few select events around the year that everyone knows is gonna happen, put a games ticket on the line so people wanna watch and see who wins it, and it keeps that flow of people watching all year round without the confusion of being like, what's happening in the season? Also, I had another idea when we spoke with Don when we are in Berlin. 
I kind of told him that maybe this should be a select event that uh, does the same thing every year, year on year. Just like a one day thing, kind of like High Rocks, you know, where you go and you do the same event every single time, but obviously more CrossFit kind of specific. Maybe a select gymnastics workout, a select cardio workout, a select strength Metcon, and maybe for overall strength, you know, like the CrossFit total. Now I know CrossFit is training for the unknown and the unknowable. For I, that's why the CrossFit games would still exist and you know you still have the open and everything like that but these select events where maybe some people just want to train for a certain select few of events I feel like that's a that's a cool way to have more people interact with the sport but also you know if you're a fan of the sport every year you're going to see the same thing and you're going to see hopefully world records and it makes it as an outsider in a lot easier to watch and understand if you don't do CrossFit itself brings more eyes on the sport Helps the athletes, the media, the brands. I get it. Anyway, moving on. Tia Claire Toomey this week. Six times CrossFit Games. Ooh. Commonwealth gold medalist Olympian shared a video of her training with a little one. <laughs> That's how you do motherhood and training. Next up, after 15 years of coaching, Ben Bergeron is stepping down and retiring from comp train and handing the reins over to Cole Sager, 10 times CrossFit Games athlete, who has been with him for the past eight years and 36 competitions that he's done. It makes sense to pass the torch to someone that can take this, run with this, make it better than I ever did. It's such the natural fit, and that's that Cole Sager will be taking over as the head of elite coaching for Comp Train. Over the years, he's coached some of the best athletes on earth to becoming the fittest on earth, as well as winning other titles, like numerous winning Spirit of the Games. Now obviously Ben Bergeron is one of the most influential coaches that's ever graced the sport of CrossFit, and he's given us his 10 lessons that he's learned from coaching games athletes. Pause the video if you wanna see all of them, but a uh, couple that stick out to me, it's never about one event, one race, or one test. Big one, there's a lot of noise out there, ignore it. Five, very true, winning takes obsession, obsession might not be healthy. I like eight, actions speak louder than words. Nine, you have to be prepared enough for things to go wrong and still be okay. And 10, you know, better people make better athletes. And then speaking of better athletes, we've had the worldwide rankings updated since the semi-finals. On the female side, Paige Powers has jumped up 12 places to 18th. Kaya Seher jumping up 40 places to 23rd. But Laura Horvath remaining on top, with Gabrielle Magala in third after her win at the European semi-final. And on the male side, Justin Medeiros stays on top with Patrick Valner behind. And Roman Krennikov jumped up four spots into third. Coming off semi-finals, obviously Justin Medeiros took fifth at North America West and since then a few people have been kind of counting the two-time champ out and this is what he had to say about it he says I love being the underdog it's, it's the best place to be right now I'm fitter than I ever have been and I'm so ready to go if that statement was an emoji probably be this one now speaking of athletes in the wild uh, a couple of things I've seen Khan Porter this is him uh, I don't know what's going on in this photo or why but uh underneath he put just the most lovely day not really what the other three people in the photo are saying. <laughs> but you're in a nice tub in the, in the middle of... What is going on there? Two, Fukowski's been training obviously for the CrossFit Games and, uh, he's, and he's been doing it in a Travis Mayer weight vest. Now, uh, some would say that it's been rubbing off on him. Those tattoos, I don't think they look... Uh... Travis Mayer underneath. This is amazing. And do you recognize this athlete? Dave Castro posted on Instagram with the caption and I thought it was really cool. So I'm like, I'm kind of sharing it. Uh, that was the question everyone was in Pasadena was asked during the women's results announcement when the MC revealed which athletes had qualified for the CrossFit Games in August. In eighth place with 421 points, Abigail Domit. Up in the grandstand, two and a half thousand pairs of eyes moved up and down the competition floor trying to figure out who that was. If you've never heard of Abigail Domit, don't feel bad. This is what blew my mind. She's only been doing CrossFit for three years. This is just her second year competing and the first year she's had a coach. Nope, that's not a typo. She's a 25 year old former cheerleader who learned how to snatch during COVID and has just qualified for the CrossFit games. <laughs> Wild, gotta love that. Three years getting to the CrossFit games is like natural, you know, some people just got that athlete in them. And just speaking about rookies going to the CrossFit games out of the field of 80, 40 men, 40 women, 20, a quarter of the field, are gonna be brand new faces to that CrossFit Games experience. With a perfect breakdown of 10 new males and 10 new females. Wonder who's gonna make a statement. You're always looking for one of them just to, I mean, we've got Trapasaurus. 
Jake Douglas in there. Uh, made of rocks, as you can see, but don't let that intimidate you. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> and then from one hunk of meat to another hunk of meat, look at that sandwich. What are you? An idiot sandwich. That's a beautiful sandwich. A um, lot of meat, a lot of cheese. Right next to another hunk of meat. Patty V, hunk of meat. If you could have me for 24 hours and I couldn't say no, what would we do? Anyway, moving on, in the last few bits of news that we've got today, first one, FBDV Mayhem Africa is the first of this season's teams to fail a drugs test. They were the winner of the Africa semi-final. Michelle Morand, one of the team members of that team, took to Instagram saying that they 100% know that no one took any kind of performance enhancing drugs and these things happen to the best in the sport. We went to the semi-final to win, we knew we'd get tested, but unfortunately we live in a world where things go wrong. It's just the way life works and it's something we cannot control. This kind of sounds like a tainted supplement, something that they are appealing it. We'll wait to see what happens. But anyway, another news story, Helga Dotter is holding up the Tower of Pisa. CrossFit, be ready for anything. The unknowing and unknowable, hold up this structure, like scaffolding. And in a bit of good news, um, after last week we covered obviously Rich Froning not really being allowed to enter the North America East semi-final, when he went to the West semi-final, that had all changed. Oh, like, yeah, oh, you man. did some vacation, hey, you did some. I will say CrossFit did a good job. Right on. They were awesome. Um, Very. <clears throat> that's good to hear. Keith, Keith hooked us up with some passes and family got in there for one day too. And it was good. It was Learning from their mistakes and growing. Love that stuff. Well done CrossFit. Also, um, I saw this Rogue Fitness are doing the heavy grace challenge. I actually might give it a go. 30 clean and jerks at 100 kilos. At just over 100. And now that CrossFit Games athletes are in full swing, <laughs> I'm losing my words now, getting to the end, in full prep for the CrossFit Games mode, they're using odd objects. And uh, Matilda Garnes, hustle made athlete, Norwegian legend, was training with the homemade pig and uh, kind of fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. That face, it's also the face of this. Also got to give a shout out to Josie, my occasional cameraman. 75 kilo PB snatch this week. Anyway team, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. There's a link down in the description below if you want to join Whoop. The best wearable on the planet attracts my sleep, my training, tells me what's optimal for the day, recovery and strain wise. And through that link, you can get a free month and a free device. Win-win. Head over to us on for the sick exclusive in the game, worn by legends. No, how it is. And if no one's told you today, you're an absolute legend. We'll catch you in the next one and then, well, another daily video. Yeah. Let's go.